we now move on to the next uh, device which is a circulator which is a very useful device as far as an optical network is uh, concerned. Uh, it basically allows you to control the light, control the direction of light path. So you see from uh, port 1 of the, so it's a 3 port, you can have it as a 3 port device or as a 4 port device. In port 1, let's say you have input in port 1, the light from that uh, input is actually uh, available in port 2 and it's not available in uh, port 3. Whereas the light from port 2 is available in port 3, it is not available in port 1. Light from port 3 is available in port 1 and not in port 2. So, uh, the way typically the circulator is drawn is like this. The circuit symbol is like this. So, from 1 to 2, it is possible. Transmission is possible. 2 to 3 also, transmission is possible. And uh, we have seen when we did uh, Brillouin scattering, we saw that this is one device which we can use to track the power that is scattered in the reverse direction. So, how does this uh, work now? So, the uh, design uh, in the forward path, which is essentially port 1 to uh, port uh, 2. So, this is port. So, this is not, uh, this is forward path, uh, port 1 to uh, port 2. How does this transmission from 1 to 2 uh, happen? So, you have a birefringent uh, walk-off block and you also have this combination of Faraday rotator plus uh, half-wave plate. Okay. Um, so, what happens here is that uh, your input could be in arbitrary polarization. Uh, this is also a polarization insensitive uh, circulator. So, which can be resolved into two orthogonal uh, components. Uh, let us take this, in this case, let us take the example where uh, your birefringent walk-off block is such that it, the vertical polarization uh, does not walk off, the horizontal polarization undergoes a displacement. Okay? So, vertical polarization is uh, appearing intact, the horizontal polarization is here and uh, we know already the working of the combination of Faraday rotator plus uh, half-wave plate. In the forward direction, the polarization axis gets rotated. Uh, so, horizontal becomes vertical, vertical becomes horizontal. Again, it sees the same birefringent walk-off uh, block. So, vertical uh, polarization, uh, the path of the vertical polarization uh, is uh, remains intact, whereas the horizontal polarization experiences the walk-off. So, you get the entire light out at the output of uh, port 2. Right. So, this is the forward path from port 1 to port 2. There are these polarizations uh, splitting beam cube and there are this reflective prism which is not playing a role in the forward path. But you will see what happens in the return path. Uh, in the return path, let us say this is port 2. We are trying to see from port 2 how it is uh, blocked to port 1 but it is uh, transmitted to port 3. So, again the birefringent plate, so input polarization could be arbitrary which you can resolve into horizontal and vertical. Uh, vertical polarization uh, remains intact, horizontal polarization is displaced. Again, this combination of uh, Faraday, wave, Faraday rotator and half wave plate uh, just does not do anything to the polarization in the reverse path. So, vertical remains intact, horizontal remains in, uh, horizontal. Again, it goes through a birefringent uh, walk-off block, the vertical polarization, the path is not disturbed, whereas the horizontal polarization, the, uh, for the horizontal polarization, the beam gets uh, displaced and it goes further displaced into uh, this path where you keep a reflector prism. This role of this prism is to reflect this horizontal polarization. And it, uh, the light from this horizontal, this path is allowed to fall on a polarization beam cube. Be this is a splitter com combiner cube. The job of this uh, cube, this is again made with two uh, birefringent prism. The job of this is to uh, combine the two polarizations or split the pol two polarizations. It's a reciprocal device. So, if you go in with horizontal polarization through this uh, arm, and vertical polarization in this arm, the beam splitter cube will just simply combine these two and you get the polarization net uh, light intact and this is happening in port 3. 
So from port 1, you allow transmission to port 2. But from port 2, you are directing everything to port 3. And if you look at the design, there is nothing com coming in port 1. So this is the port 1 path. This was the port 1 path. And there is no return light in the path of port 1. It's all redirected to port 3. Now, you can also think of some similar combination of uh, devices, uh, combination of uh, micro optic devices to reconstruct the path from port 3 to port 1. So, something similar uh, can be done. So, this uh, to give you a feel of uh, how the size is, the circulator actually, uh, the, the, this is kept in a very messy way. But the circulator is, the size is this. So inside this, which is hermetically sealed, you have uh, the two sets of uh, parallel rotator uh, phase retardation plate and birefringent walk-off blocks. One which takes care of transmission from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and the other one which takes care from 1 to uh, port 3 to port 1. So, we now know how to control the path of uh, light as well. So, we talked about the working of several components uh, in the last module and uh, here are some common parameters which are found in the data sheets of uh, most of these uh, components. Uh, it is important to understand uh, what is the center wavelength of these components because uh, whether you take a coupler or an isolator or a circulator all these are wavelength dependent devices. Uh, you know that the coupling uh, ratio, the coupling ratio or the coupling constant um, is, is, is a function of wavelength and so what works for a specific wavelength, specific band of wavelengths may not work for other bands. So you need to notice what is the center wavelength depending on whether you are trying to set up a 1300 nanometer network or a 1550 nanometer network, you need to choose the appropriate center wavelength. In case of uh, non-reciprocal devices that we saw which are circulators and uh, isolators. Uh, the Faraday rotation phenomena is a function of uh, wavelength. The uh, rotation, the angle of rotation given by the half wave plate is also a function of uh, wavelength. So you have to be careful about uh, op trying to figure out what is the wavelength of operation that you would like to choose. Um, the other parameters we talked about are insertion loss, the isolation, polarization dependent loss and so on. So for example, if I have a device, uh, I will take an example of an isolator here. I have an isolator where the input power is P1 and the output power is P2. Uh, the isolator, uh, you will remember that it is supposed to transmit power only in uh, one direction. So the insertion loss is simply, uh, uh, you know, the ratio of uh, the two powers. So, insertion loss in dB would be minus 10 log uh, P2 by P1 and you put a negative sign because P2 is uh, always uh, either equal to or less than uh, P1. And um, the other important parameter here is um, the return loss. Now, the return loss for example, for an isolator tells you uh, what is the uh, return uh, power. For instance, uh, if I uh, for instance, in this case, uh, uh, the power that is reflected, uh, so if you terminate the output, then what is whatever is the power reflected from the system is not the reflection from the uh, refractive index mismatch here. It is because of the way your uh, micro optic elements are uh, misaligned or it is because of the non-ideality in the design of the isolator itself. So, the way to measure return loss is always you terminate the output, uh, you send in your uh, input power and then you measure what is the reflected power in a particular port in which you want to measure the return loss. Take it as a ratio with respect to that of the launched power. So, that tells you the, uh, so the, the larger is the return loss, uh, the uh, better for you because larger return loss would mean that P ref, the reflected power is very different from that of the incident power and that is what you want. Uh, in case of an isolator, we also define isolation as a ratio of uh, P4 uh, to P3 if you are transmitting power in the opposite uh, direction. It is not supposed to transmit any power in the opposite direction, but suppose you send in a power in the opposite direction, which means you are intentionally launching power in the opposite direction. 
What is the power that uh, the input port collects? That is your isolation and you would like your isolation to be as large as possible. So, a general schematic to uh, characterize all these uh, devices for these parameters is shown in this uh, picture here. This is what you would end up uh, in doing, uh, doing in a laboratory when you are trying to set up a network. So, uh, let us say this is the uh, device uh, that you want to uh, test. You want to test the insertion loss, you want to test let us say the return loss of this device or an isolation of this de device if it is a circulator or an isolator. So, what you do is you uh, connect your source, a calibrated source which means you should know what is the power that is coming out of the source. Connect it to a 2 by 1 coupler, again a calibrated uh, coupler, you would first characterize this coupler. And uh, then you transmit the power, the, uh, the test signal into your uh, device. And the way, when you do this, you make sure that uh, all this light that is coming out of the device is terminated, which means that um, you will put an index matching, matching fluid at the output of the fiber connector, right? So that there is no reflection from the uh, because of the refractive index mismatch, because of the impedance mismatch between the fiber and air. So, you terminate it by putting what is called as an index matching uh, gel. Um, then uh, you can measure the reflected power that is a reflectance depending on the kind of device that you are uh, choosing. You could have certain reflection and that you can uh, measure from the return power as a return power from the second port of the uh, coupler, right? So, you can for in, for instance in this particular case uh, an example of minus 14 1.9 dBm is shown maybe uh, 0 dBm power uh, maybe 0 dBm power was uh, launched into the uh, fiber. Uh, so, the, the return loss of this entire system including the coupler is minus 41 uh, return loss is minus 10 log. So, it is 41.9 uh, dB in this case, right? Um, of course, this would require a careful characterization of the coupler that you are uh, using so that you are taking, taking uh, into account the insertion loss and the return loss of the coupler.